tell me how the fries are. Wonderful. Is it good? <laughs> yeah. This is your sixth book of poetry, mm -hmm. The Tigers They Let Me. Yeah. In these poems, you're talking about falling in love, you're talking about love affairs, intimacy, and you just have really candid and intimate portraits of moments with friends. Did this book feel more about vulnerability to you? Were you trying to do something different here in terms of vulnerability? Mm. I wanted it to be vulnerable, you know, like it, 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 I, I wanted a book, um, originally set out to write a book of love poems. It remained such, but also like more became like a book just about, about love. And if I'm creating this thing, if I'm writing this thing, like I need to like go into this space and see like what, where, where are these things that I'm trying to say, you know? Yeah. By engaging with this thing, I reveal to myself a little bit more about myself to myself. Uh, so thus, like, the hope is that that will allow me to sharpen my tools of vulnerability. Mm. Um, the tool of vulnerability to me is sort of like the best tool that we have as people right. to, like, be people <laughs> in the world. I know not every poem that I write is is a, um exercise in vulnerability. On one level, it always is, just because it's like, you know, another peeling back of something from the surface into me and the opportunity to potentially like what how what it might reveal thus than what that might reveal yeah um but but yes of course it's like not not everything is like this exercise in like super emotional vulnerability you know some stuff is just kind of like whatever i loved the story poems in the book mm -hmm. but it felt like in most of the stories there's a moment where <clears throat> it erupts into something that's undeniably poetry mm -hmm. um, at a language level but also just at an emotion level it feels live in the same way that the oil paint smells like oil still yeah. you know um, and I love that about these story poems if they're... well thank you yeah, um, poetry is a thing that says like all the time is happening at the exact same time always you know and because it's like that's the way that that we think like I'm seeing you here right now yeah. but like while well, the same time that this is happening I might also be having the memory of three months ago of being at right. here at the same restaurant, right. you know? Yeah. Um, while also at the same time thinking like, oh, I'm having this for, for lunch, what am I having for dinner, you know? Right. And so it's like, we think like that, the poem mimics that. And so like, right. I, I love being able to have the opportunity to play with time, uh, a poem in story form, um, you know, allows for, at least for me, to like explore that and jump around and have past, present, and future tense occur at the same time. Particularly like if the thing that I'm writing about is about time and yeah. how, um, how it carries me and how I carry it. So these are the curry fries, I think? Curry fries, right? I think. And peppers on top or is that okra? Looks like jalapenos. Yeah. yeah. And then... Oh my God, that's good. All these poems yeah. about encountering the self and like yeah. tender kind of relationship with the self and uh, like you were saying trying to get the self to open up and yeah. reveal itself to you it's like you were holding the camera looking at yourself but then it starts to disappear and it feels like you feel that especially in that poem um where you do that pronoun shift at the end i forget what it's called oh uh, simply yeah 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 or it's an excerpt from a larger poem called simply okay and it feels like suddenly you're awake inside that poem and you're going, look, I'm here, I'm standing inside the poem. Well, I think like, you know, I mean, like my take with, like, I think yes. And at the same time that there's like, you know, language too is uh, a tethering. It is always seeking to translate something that is without language, without form, right. um, without anything that feels of concreteness. Right. and seeking to imbue it with such so that we can communicate that unknowing, unseen, untangible thing to another person. Right. And so it's like, right. you know, I think like the language, like, <laughs> yes, like, you know, particularly with something like poetry, that like poetry is very much connected to like, what does it mean to seek to uh, capture this ethereal, untouchable thing right. while also seeking to remain ethereal and untouchable so it's like the language is i think like seeking to like remain languageless as soon as you know it's like a, a, a bird exiting one's throat and like the 
like as soon as it it exits uh-huh. it, like because it has form right. it suddenly has become chained to its own body uh-huh. you know and like whatever it was when it was in the throat before it like became this bird on the outside world yeah like is 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 irrevocably like removed from it like right. the only way to like you know uh, uh, make a thing known is to also like chain it at the same time what what do you hope people experience when they read mm-hmm. like this book mm-hmm. about I mean because it doesn't seem like you're interested in like talking about the idea of love you, I, I feel like you're a philosopher mm-hmm. but you're not you're not one who's gonna sit there and say listen to my ideas <laughs> so I mean it, so what do you hope that's a question like uh over the course of my life, all the different ways that um, my ideas of love have been shaped mm-hmm. by outside sources, even when uh, those outside sources like shaped it in one way and allowed me to kind of like question that, mm-hmm. um, still like the questioning wasn't as deep as I thought that it was, and yeah. wasn't as like revealing and revelatory or substantial as I perhaps thought that it was and like and then had other experiences that then like oh I still was coming to this table you know that I had prepared for love or that love had prepared for me and was still coming there dressed in something that was perhaps not appropriate to the (laughs) table to the event um thinking that I was naked you know but but really, like, uh, I was clothed in something, you know? And so it's like, you know, are there ways in which that perhaps, like, upon reading this, like, that someone might potentially, like, you know, feel the breath of love? And that's enough, you know? Yeah. But from feeling that breath of love in these different forms and fashions that, like, the book speaks to, um, might that, like, allow the space for them to, like, think about think about love maybe yeah. differently right. you know um, it would be great if folks were just like yo read this book let's talk about love you know yeah. um, like that'd be super rad <laughs> well, you know because it's like one of those things where it's like that one could say like oh that's love right. and then point to something right next to it that looks completely uh, different and be like that's love too yeah. and then and that's love and all these three things are not only different, but seemingly opposites of each other. But right. somewhere underneath all that, they're the same thing. Reminds me of poetry. <laughs> yes. Ice tea? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you have a favorite love poem from the book? You know, when, when, you, when you work on poems, it like, particularly when you're like working on them towards a finished thing, that you like give over to other people yeah at least for me one there's always the aspect where the book is not quite what it has revealed itself to me of what I want it to be um because there's not enough time like it reveals itself but by the time it starts really revealing itself it's like I gotta turn it in we we work and we shape things like something comes to us something offers itself to us and we're like all right I'm gonna take this thing, and but I gotta like shape it in the way that like thank you, thank you. Um, shape it in the way that one best like communicates what it's trying to do to other people, but also like I'm in collaboration with this unseen thing. Mm. So what are the things that like are exciting me, and yeah. what are the things exciting me specifically in this moment as I'm like tempering the sides of this like unseen metal, and so it's like you know. You you finish doing that, you finish crafting a thing, yeah. and like there's a there's a bit of a removal from what it was. No matter how much you're trying mm. to like keep imbued in it, the spirit and the essence of what sparked the poem. So it's so, just flipping through it because. So, uh, <laughs> so like you know, it's Here's it's some interesting. Old yeah, and and be like, oh, I love this poem, and I love this poem because of like what what it's connected to, and I love this poem, and I love this poem, you know. Could you read one for us? One that you just, every time you read it, you're like, hell yeah. Let me see it. <laughs> I've loved her like the stars coming out, 
Ursus paws pushing down on the dark quilt as easily as the cat stepping over the cushions. I have loved her like how the buds in May can do nothing but awaken under the fingers of spring. I have loved her like how the figs swell and how the plums fall when full and how rubbing rosemary leaves its scent upon our thumbs, I love you. As easy as this, as easily as her, just now and here became you. Hmm. Oh man, thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks for talking to us here today at Happy Oma's to. Hideaway, where we thanks have some for, fantastic fries and Thank burgers. you for lunch. Thank you for inviting me to yeah. do this. You know, also just like the food was so lovely and delicious.